Players. 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 Players own. Players own. Players own voice. Players own voice. voice. It's Players Own Voice, a podcast from CBC Sports. If there's ever an I in team, it's got to be the goalie. No matter the sport, keepers have uniquely individual roles to play in the team dynamic. Maybe that's why they always make such good interviews. It's a perspective thing. Now that I'm done psychoanalyzing life between the pipes, it's time to introduce today's guest. My name is Anastasia Busas, two-time Olympian in the sport of long track speed skating. And today, I'm talking to a good bud, Olympic bronze medalist for Canada, professional for Sweden, one of the greatest goaltenders Canadian soccer has ever seen, Steph LeBay. I am here with Canada's starting keeper, oh, not nice. goalie. I know that fires you up, bud. It really gets under my skin. Stephanie LeBay. Wait, LeBay? LeBay. Let's put it right here, right now, on the record. LeBay. LeBay. You heard it here first. Yeah, there's no lobby. Lobby? It's like, you know, people call each other Bay. Yeah. And then, like, French, LeBay. LeBay. Okay, well then, yeah. if you ever say your last name incorrectly, it's yeah. on you now, because yeah. you're listening to this uh, podcast. How are you doing, buddy? Doing well. I'm, you know, just chilling on this bed, and yeah, hanging out. Thank you for being here. I do most of my interviews on a bed, actually. I like it. Yeah, I, I feel like I live in hotel rooms, and we're friends, and it's just player's own voice, right? Yeah, it's like, it's our home comfort zone, you know? It's... <laughs> It's what we're used to. It's where we can be the most real mm-hmm. ourselves. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I appreciate <laughs> I appreciate you taking the time to chat. Listen, can you believe that we're two years out of Tokyo right now? No, I just saw all of the, you know, Facebook reminders of the, on this day, two years ago, um, you won a bronze medal. And for like a week, it was just the constant reminders that Rio was two years ago. And I think it was... All of a sudden it clicked and it's like, well, if Rio was two years ago, then that means Tokyo is only two years away. And that was kind of crazy. That's so weird that we like, well, not me anymore. I mean, I'm very much retired <laughs> and I enjoy Pinot Grigio. But isn't it weird that we live our lives on four-year cycles? Yes, 100%. So many people say that like when, you know, we talk about retiring or, or moving on or, or whatnot. It's, we always say, yeah, I think I'll go another cycle. I think I'll go another four years. And people are like, what do you mean four years? Like. Why are you choosing four years? Why not choose two years? And it's just so funny that it's, yeah, it's such a milestone for us. Being kind of in that midway point, how's your motivation? You know, as a soccer player, we now have the World Cup next year. So for us, it's after the Olympics, we kind of had have two years down where um, there's just, there's friendlies, there's small tournaments we play in, but nothing major. And now all of a sudden, you know, this fall we have our World Cup qualifying, World Cup next year, and then soon after that Olympic qualifying and then Olympics. So it's kind of like these last two years are so exciting and busy for us um, that now is is the best part of it. This might be a stupid question, and this was my own frailty when I was skating, but sometimes I would struggle to get up when, like, there would be a World Championship and then the Olympics, or if there was two big mm-hmm. events back-to-back. Obviously prepping for World Cup and then knowing that there's a – quick turnaround right like Mm -hmm. not even a year or 13 months maybe between two how do you reset your mind and your body to be ready to go not only for world cup but then the olympics for us we only have one world cup every four years as well so it's actually just as big as the olympics for us so i think the excitement going into the world cup it's we're so focused on just the world cup we are kind of barely even thinking or talking about tokyo it's it's so it seems so far in the distance because we're just so focused on the World Cup right now. And um, as I said, you know, both are only once every four years. Whereas I know a lot of other sports, there's multiple World Cups in a year or World Championships maybe every year or two years. So for us, this is kind of like the pinnacle for soccer is the World Cup. So that's like the big show. And then the Olympics is it's different. You know, World Cup there's 24 teams, and then Olympics there's only 12. So it's just a totally different challenge and a different mindset. And of course, Olympics, you know, you're part of a bigger team and they're so different for us. Um, it's pretty easy to get geared up for either. You're now playing in Sweden. Mm-hmm. Backtrack. Hey, son. Hey, son. I was going to say that. I knew it. I knew how to say <laughs> that. 
Uh, before that, and I know you've talked about this extensively, but you were on Calgary Foothills WFC. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, remind our listeners, our faithful listeners, what, what kind of transpired there. Long story short, tried out for a men's team, got denied. Nah, just kidding. I'll give no, it a little more. No, that's good. That's good. <laughs> um, yeah, I wanted to do something different with my career. Um, I've always said, you know, I want to help take this national team, the Canadian women's team, to, to the top of the podium. We've got two straight bronze medals uh, in the Olympics and um, haven't been on the podium yet in the, the World Cup. And I really want to help this team get to the top of the podium. And because the team has never done that in the history, I know that for me, if I want to be a part of that team, I've got to do something different than what anyone's ever done in the history so if I want different results I've got to take a different approach and um, so for me I I was trying to brainstorm that and I thought why not try to crack into the men's league and I've always trained with men in the off season so wanted to give it a shot and went out tried out and um, had great response from the team the coach the club everything in Calgary It, it was an unbelievable experience and unfortunately at the the last minute you know the the league denied me and, and said that I wasn't able to sign a contract and play. So I had to start looking at other options, and that's kind of what led me to Sweden. But um, that was, I guess, the reasoning for it. And there, but you, you have options, though, in a sense that you can play over in Europe. Whereas, like, you know, I've got a few buddies that play women's hockey in, in Canada and down in the States, and very few go over to Europe. Like, what, what does that European experience provide you yeah it's it's an opportunity to be a full-time professional I mean you go over there and you're without your loved ones you're without you know all your closest friends and you're really living a professional lifestyle where everything you do is kind of based around um, your sport and you get to fully focus a hundred percent on being the best soccer player that you can be and you get to, of course, travel around the country that you're playing in and, and, and meet new people, meet other international players that are playing on your team or in the league. And, um, you know, I was a little bit bored my first two weeks, so I started reaching out. To, I, like, Googled all the other sports teams in, in my city and met up with a couple other Canadian <laughs> hockey players. <laughs> so I, like, found the Canadian the Canadians on the men's hockey team, and we're hanging out now. We're buddies. So... It's like those experiences, you know, I would have never met them and, and would have never um, hung out with them in mm-hmm. Sweden. And um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So you get all of these amazing experiences and meeting new people and just playing a totally different style of play. Like they, they play a much different style of play in Europe. So it's, you know, it helps you round more as a player and as an athlete to, to train in different ways. For me, when I was skating, I sometimes didn't love to have my focus be 100% on skating because then mm-hmm. I just I don't I don't want to say I psyched myself out but like I always enjoyed going to school and like having I don't know like something that could balance me but do you thrive off of that just being like I am here to play soccer let's go I think it's a, it's a mixture it's kind of like it's that mindset where you're there to play soccer you're getting paid to be there um you're you can go to the gym when you want you've got all this free time like you're not trying to balance the whole um, oh, I got family dinner here. Oh, I've got to go hang. My friends are doing this. I've got this and this. Of course, those things are amazing, but it it's a unique experience where you're there and it's almost like you don't have any other commitment. So everything you decide to do is kind of based around your sport. But at the same time, you get to be creative in creating your balance and creating your life outside of sport. And like I said, if it's reaching out, going to meet new people, it's exploring a new city, um, you know, there's times where I was taking online classes cause mentally I wanted to keep sharp, but I had all the time to do that. I find when I'm home, I just have, I feel like I have no time. Like I don't have that same kind of freedom. I feel like when I'm home, I have so many other things going on that it's tough to really like zone in on it. So it's just that unique experience where you, you have way less things pulling at you and pulling in different directions. And, um, yeah, you're able to really just kind of live that. I guess, yeah, unique lifestyle of a professional athlete. And home now, of course, is Calgary. Yes. Great city. Recently. I, uh, I don't know I, if I can call it home since I haven't technically stepped inside my well, house since gaining possession, but, you know, my stuff's there. Let's also jump to your dirty secret. You cheer for the Edmonton Oilers. Did I hear yes. that? Like, when? I don't know. I Maybe mean, you should leave for me. I mean, the Calgary Sparks, it's, you know... <laughs> I'm 
a kid from Calgary, all right? So I'm happy that you're there. But, like, let me be honest. sparks Jeez. right now. Ooh, Not that the Oilers are much. Uh, <laughs> moving <What>? on? <laughs> um, but, no, I, I love your career because it hasn't been a crazy linear path to success, right? No. I prefer the roller coaster. Yeah, I do too, actually. I mean, I like I don't I don't like the zipper like at the Calgary Stampede oh. or the X or something. No. I get a little bit of motion sickness oh, now. Oh, I'm I'm with you. But roller a coasters bit of vertigo. I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fine with roller coasters. So, you actually stepped away from the game before London. Yep. Like why and what did you do? What, what when you're not being, you know, a professional soccer player, what do you what do you do? Yeah, well, you know, I was actually, I was still playing, so I was over in Sweden, um, but I just decided to step away from the national team. Um, just that specific environment was becoming very toxic for me um, in terms of my own self, uh, I guess, experiences. It, you know, I was, I was kind of at the point where I was, like, blaming other people for things. I was... Um, blaming coaches. I was so stressed about what coaches thought of me. Why aren't the coaches playing me? Um, you know, if other people were taking shortcuts or cutting corners, I was like taking all this energy to be like internally mad at them. And um, just like so much spending my energy on everything except for myself. And it was just becoming so, so draining. And I was, I couldn't get out of this like negative spiral. Um, so I knew that, I knew that soccer was still a big passion for me and I loved playing. Um, but I just kind of had to find that, um, whether it was confidence or self-worth or self-value or how to just focus my attention on what I can control, um, just kind of come back to all of that. And in order to do that, I just knew that I needed to remove myself from that toxic environment. So made a tough decision in March of 2012 to step away from the team. Had no idea what was going to happen that year, of course. You know, the team went on to win historic bronze medal that year. And um, it was tough watching it from the sidelines. I, I actually flew to London to watch. Um, so I was there watching the their like third group game and their quarterfinal. Um, so it was tough to see, you know, from the stands and see it from that perspective. But I'm so extremely grateful I made the decision because I, I know 100% I'm so confident to say that I wouldn't be where I am without that. You have been very vocal, and I, I thank you, on um... – you know, the importance of mental health. How have you grown throughout your career in, in your self-awareness and just being proactive with ensuring you're in, you know, a mentally healthy state of mind? It's been such a journey and it's so crazy looking back on it because I've been through so many different struggles and it's like different things that creep up on me. Um, when I was really, really young, I was... Um, really, really focused on what other people thought, what coaches thought, um, and I put so much energy into that. And then I started to kind of, uh, one coach I remember gave me some books to read, and I'm not a big reader, so I remember kind of reading them and being like, oh, cool, but not really taking it to heart. And I was still at the point where I was pretty talented, so a lot of things were coming to me, and I was I was young, so I was um, growing up or I was moving up in the ladder, making the provincial teams, making youth national teams. And, and then it kind of got to the point where I was starting to become more consistent with the youth national teams. And then of course, you know, I'm hitting with other players that are just as good as me. And, and then I'm starting to, to not play anymore and, and getting put on the bench. And I think that's when the cycle started a bit when I was younger and I was able to kind of get out of it. I went to college, started getting a new experience there, gained more confidence there. Um, but I don't think I ever really dealt with the issues from when I was younger. And then that's when they kind of started coming out again in 2012, where I was in the same type of a situation where I was the backup keeper with the national team for a really, really long time. And finally it just hit me where obviously there was an internal drive of wanting to play, but I didn't know how to deal with that drive, um, in the sense of motivating myself. And in, instead of just motivating myself and finding what I needed to do, I was looking for external feedback and external, um, I guess motivation and that's really when I took the time away and kind of came back stopped started focusing on what I could control and um, focus on those types of things and once I started putting my energy into what I can control that's when things started changing and then you know I, I started flying I was I was moving up I was starting to play more games with the national team and then 
of course, you know, the, the big change came in 2016 where I, I took over the starting spot and then got to be the starting keeper in um, Rio for the Olympics. And then after the Olympics, you know, I, I went back down into a, a really tough, tough phase where it's like all this attention after the Olympics. Everyone wants to see the medal. Everyone's talking about how well you played, what a good performance. And then all of a sudden that goes away and it's like you're coming back to just yourself again. And um, for me, it's almost like I went into a situation where I was starting to feed off of that external energy and the external praise. And when that stopped, you know, of course, people start focusing on the Winter Olympics and, and other things. And when that external praise stops coming in, you're left with yourself. And I'd kind of lost my self-worth in that moment and, and lost that self-praise and, and finding that confidence. That was a, a big struggle. But um, so it's a constant struggle for me to, to keep coming back to that. But I've really, really found my niche in that in terms of my yoga, my meditation. And um, like, I don't stress about the little things. And I really think that I've got to a point where I can brush things off a lot easier um, and not let things affect me. That was, that was a, a long one. That was a very, very eloquent answer. And like, I <laughs> I went on a journey with okay, you yeah. because I feel as though I've, I've felt the internal satisfaction versus external praise. And I always go back to like John Candy and um, cool runnings when he's yeah. like, kid, if you're not enough without a gold medal, you'll never be enough with one. It's so true. And I've, I've said that to yeah. many of my friends. To be honest. I mean, certainly not mm -hmm. myself because I wasn't necessarily a gold medal contender. Maybe if I come back yeah. for a little uh, yeah, comeback, yeah. boys. Um, I, I dated a hockey goalie once upon a time, and, and she always was so eloquent in the sense that she would say, sorry, keeper, keeper, keeper for yeah. you, not goalie. Oh, but, but goalie is hockey. Hockey goalie, That's okay. yes. Tender. <laughs> <laughs> but she, and it was so interesting how she'd say, I am in a team sport, but my position is, is almost an individual mm -hmm. sport. So... How do you get over a tough loss when you have this unique individual role in a team sport? Well, it's never my fault. <laughs> it's all your there's, defender's fault. There's fault. ten <laughs> people in front of me. I had to go through every single one of them. Yeah, That's you guys, what my dad come tells on. me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know. I think for me, I've just, when I was younger, of course, like, learning the position and learning the role learning the pressures that come with it of course you know there's some moments where you make a mistake and it's like holy crap everyone's looking at me everyone knows that that was my fault i just let in a goal whatever and you, you think about all those things and the point that i've got to now is just like i i used to say that i need the mind of a fish i need to just forget things within a few seconds but now i've kind of got to the point where i've learned how to learn from a situation and move on within that three to five seconds so it's not just forget it but it's like learn and move on because if i'm not completely present like i could be asked to make a save 30 seconds after i just let in a goal <clears throat> and if i'm not ready for that save i'm gonna let in another goal and i think for me it's just all about this like next task mentality and it's just constantly being present and focusing on what i can do next what i can do next what i can do next and um that's really kind of helped me and by the end of the game, to be honest, like I usually forget someone will be like, oh, remember that goal, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, eh, I need some game film. Because <laughs> I just, I don't, I have a pretty bad memory, so I don't remember things right away. Um, so for me, it's, yeah, it's just being completely present when I'm playing and not worrying about anything that's, you know, just gone past me or any mistake I've made because um, the last thing I want to do is make another one right away. I'm like so bad at soccer, like so bad. <laughs> you just take your foot, you kick the ball. Yeah, I do yeah. that, and then I usually broke break a toenail, to be <laughs> honest. And let's, well, I'm looking at your feet right yeah. now. They're beautiful. Like, They're blistered, and there's like a little bit of a bunion. <laughs> oh, pretty bing. Yeah, yeah you some might need good surgery. Calluses. You might need surgery when I you're will. when you're a little bit older, a little bit longer in the tooth. But look at those yoga toes, though. Yeah, you got like little you have hands. like muscles where you shouldn't have them. <laughs> Um, so, okay. So someone scores on you. Is your feedback like, well, I dove to the left and I should have dove to the right. Like, wh how do you, how do you learn from that? Um, well, I'm assuming that one you're talking about a penalty shot. Cause for the most part in a game, I won't dive the wrong way. 
Yeah, I was talking yeah. about. Yeah, you're right. So I do. I do know a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Um, penalty shots. You know what? All the pressure's on the shooter, so they should score. So I don't really think about that. Okay. Um, in terms of in the game, um, I usually will know right away. I'm, I'm at the point where I've number one let in a lot of goals in my in my life, um, in games and in training sessions, and I know my skill set and, um, like how I am as a keeper I know it so well that when I make a mistake I usually know exactly what I've done so it's pretty easy for me when a goal is scored um, to quickly tell myself something like um, you need to I'll just throw out some soccer lingo here I'll just mm -hmm. say like I, you need to stay higher you need to be more aggressive you need to move your feet you should have dropped two more steps um, you, you didn't get set early enough you're a bit too much on your heels like there's all these little cues that I know, and when something happens, I'll know right away what I needed to do. So I'll just give that quick check and move on. Um, blaming it on your teammates. I've heard through the grapevine <laughs> that uh, you like to chirp. Yes. Ah. Who's your favorite teammate to chirp? Teammate to chirp. Ooh. Um, probably Sink. We like chirping each other. What does she like? Get, like, what, like, what are you like? Hey, you got two left feet. You're not good. Like, what, what, what do you say? <laughs> The funny th sink. I mean, sink's tough to chirp. You, get, I gotta chirp her like off the field mostly. On the field, it's like, I mean, obviously if she's not scoring, I'll, I'll start chirping her, and I don't know, I'll, make, I'll probably make a comment about like not being sweaty enough or not that I'm not having to work hard enough or um, <laughs> something like that. If she's not scoring on me, I don't know. So it's so hard. It's like one of those things where you do in the moment, but you don't really think about what you're saying. See, no. I, I like I'm an only child and was an like there's no individual athlete. And, there's no chirping and speed skating. No, you don't like and look like over I, on the line and no, like, no, <laughs> my God, no. I was like, I tried to be as zen as possible okay. when I skated. I was like, we're here to love, <laughs> not judge. Like truly, <laughs> may the best man win. Yeah, like <laughs> no chirping ever. I think, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's so weird. I feel like it just happens in games, and I'll like. I'll say things and then I'm kind of shocked at what comes out of my mouth. <laughs> like I, I accidentally cursed. We have boys that train with us and I like cursed at one of the boys the other day. And then after somebody made a comment and they're like, remember when you yelled at that like 16 year old boy? I'm like, yep. Now <laughs> I do. changed his life. <laughs> yeah. He's probably now I do. still crying himself <laughs> to sleep. And it's just funny. I'm like, I don't know. Oh, you just get God. so intense and you're so in the moment and things just come out. Yeah. I've never been that intense. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I should have I think had. I'm a different person when I walk across the line. You know, when I step across the line, step on. Mm -hmm. I just become a new new person. New coach. Yeah. What's next? Gold medal. That's a pretty damn good answer. I don't even two, need to. Two gold medals. World yeah. Cup and Olympic. Um, yeah, the team is, uh, I'm really excited about the direction we're going. And it's like, it's so fun to see all the creativity come alive and, John laid such an important foundation for this team and structure and got everybody thinking and moving the same way. And now Kenneth's like taking that structure and that base and just bringing everybody's like creative minds alive. And it's pretty cool to see the, the mixture of it and, and how um, it's almost like Kenneth's like who he is as a coach is at the right time. You know, if we had him before John, maybe it wouldn't have been as successful, but it's like, the timing of things and and the movement of from John to him it's it's been pretty pretty cool to see how the team's changed gold medal against the United States or does it matter doesn't matter that'd be pretty amazing like a North American rivalry but um yeah it doesn't matter who I don't feel just as good like I wouldn't mind it, it may be kind of cool to do it against Japan in Japan we'll throw that out there oh that's rough, yeah. though. That's how we won our bronze medal, though. I know, but that's Brazil, rough. In Brazil, oh, you know? Lord, yeah. Yeah, but... See, that's why I'm not good at sports, like, or not... <laughs> I wasn't as good as I could have been, because, like, I just have too much compassion. I'm like, no, that's too no. mean. They're going to be so sad. <laughs> well, you know, they still have a silver medal around their neck. That's nice. Yeah. You can chirp them all you want, though. <laughs> I'm in can. your corner. I'm in Thanks. your corner. Um... <laughs> Final question, where are you happiest? Where am I happiest? Um, I'm happiest when my dog's leash is in my hand and my dog is on the end of the leash. <laughs> 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 Not just his leash, because that's sad. And my dog. Um, I have Georgia beside me, 
and probably my family in the room. That's uh okay. So, but why would the dog be on a leash if it? <laughs> True, if we're in a room, man, you we're got like a just, crazy, crazy creative mind, right? I think George and I are just about. We've just all finished a nice family dinner. George and I are about to take Rio for a nice little walk after dinner. He's got to go for his post dinner walk. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's why the leash is on. We're ready Health to help digestion. To yeah, yeah all of us. You know, you yeah. like to go for a nice walk after you eat a yeah. big meal. I do too, actually. Yeah. <laughs> of course, we're we're talking about Georgia. Just Georgia Simmerling, Alpine cross a ski cross. Excuse me, track cycle. Like literally, right. Georgia can do anything. Georgia <laughs> could win a gold medal at underwater basket weaving. Whatever it is, <laughs> she's annoying. That's, she's just annoying. Yeah, how, extremely annoying. How talented she's she not is. worth her voices right now. <laughs> <laughs> Steph Labe. Good one. You heard it here first, all right? Don't ever say your last name incorrectly again. I'll come after you. Thanks for sitting down on a bed with me. Oh, thank you for having me. No, I appreciate it. And um, if you ever need, like, help with some some extra shots, like, I could probably yeah not hit the, the, the target, but... Yeah, maybe we can have a penalty shootout. Like I said, all the pressure's on the shooter, but... Um, you know, we can try. I was a big game player. You, okay. Well, I was a big game player. Show up in big moments. <laughs> Let's have a shootout. Peace! I recorded that conversation with Steph while laying on a hotel bed in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Players Own Voice Podcast is a CBC Sports production. Email your comments to us at playersownvoicepodcast at cbc.ca social media hashtag players own voice david giddens is the producer i'm anna stasher on insta twitter face and all that thanks for listening